What's up, everyone? If you are like me, you got a fancy camera that's called an A7SIII, and you wanted to shoot S-Log3 because you heard that it has the best dynamic range. And if you are really crazy about changing up things in post a lot, you want something that gives you more flexibility in the dynamic range, or you want a picture profile that um, gives you more flexibility um, in post, I mean. So you're thinking you want to shoot S-Log3, but if you shoot S-Log3, that means that you're going to have to do like something with the color grading before you color grade. And you might not understand that. If you've, if you've watched Gerald Undone, you have almost figured out how to do it unless you were smart enough to understand him. He's hard to understand because he's so scientific. I'm not scientific. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you how to do it with Adobe products. So if you have Adobe Premiere, if you have Adobe After Effects, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to um, expose properly for S-Log3. That's what this is about. If you don't have a camera like this, if you're not shooting S-Log3, you don't need to watch this. So let's do this. When I walk up in the club and say, everybody want to know my name. Yeah, here comes the glass roll. Yeah, here comes the glass roll. All right, so the first thing you're going to need if you're trying to set up your exposure for um, S-Log3 so that you can use Sony's picture profile is you're going to need a gray card. These are cheap. You can buy them on the internet. I sometimes don't have a card like that, and then I go find something that's gray. Like, this isn't gray. I find something with a neutral gray color on it, and I um, use it to expo set up the exposure on my camera. Because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to adjust the aperture um, and the ISO uh, uh, and you have, but mainly the aperture in order to get it to the right lighting level or the right exposure level so that when you use Sony's picture profile, it automatically changes it into a very nice looking image. And so, um, what if you if you have set up your zebras um hopefully you know what that is uh, you go in, into the into that part of your camera and you set it up to i think it's 42 plus or minus one if, if i'm wrong i'll put it on the screen the actual number and so when it and the, and then you pull out your gray card and you say okay can i see the zebras on the card and if it's exposed properly you'll see the zebras on the card and um so um, that's the first thing you need to know. You have to set it up in your camera so that it interacts properly with the picture profile from Sony. So, um, you go to the Sony website and, and you, you look for their S log three LUT. So it's a file. It's probably a dot cube file. You store it somewhere on your computer, like you would store anything on your computer. And, um, you're actually going to store four of them because I'm pretty sure Sony has four LUTs. I don't really use all four of them. I use the first LUT. Um, so, um, after you, um, p p import it into Premiere Pro, what you're going to do is you go to the Lumetri, Lumetri color section, which is built into Premiere Pro. If you're in After Effects, you have to use it as an effect. So you'll go to the effects search and you'll type in Lumetri and then you'll drag it on to your clip and then it will uh, apply uh, a Lumet Lumetri color um, effect, which allows you to, to do things with the colors. So you're going to go to basic. You're not going to go to the creative because I know everyone knows creative. If you use, if you use Adobe Premiere, um, you're going to go to basic and then you're going to look for your, look for your LUT and you're going to then go and, and find where you stored it on your computer. So you're going to have gone to the, uh, Sony website. I'll put a link in my, in my pro, in my description. And then you, um, download these LUTs, you have them on your computer, I have them in an easily accessible place because I use the LUTs that often, and then um, you import that LUT. It will automatically change the colors. It will change it out of S-Log3, it will change it into Sony, Sony's picture profile. Um, after you've done that, can you leave it? Sure. Should you leave it? It's it's kind of up to you. I don't ever leave it. Um, I then go to the creative section because I always want to add a little bit of something on to my video. Um, and there are a lot of different picture profiles. Um, with some of them, 
Um, when you use that profile, like an HDR profile, you might want to crank it up. Like you might want to crank up, crank up the profile to 200. Um, an HDR is like high dynamic range. It's like um, really bringing out the shape of everything. Um, but if you're using a normal profile, like like maybe the first one, I'm talking about the first um, Fuji one uh, after Cinescape, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. Um, if you're using a profile like that, you're gonna wanna turn it down a lot because it's gonna look really bad unless you turn it down to like 20. And so a lot of the time, I'll just use one of the first, f one of the first four and then I'll turn it down to like 20. So you can barely see it, it will just bring out the colors a little more. Um, so I, I know that a lot of people um, are wondering about um, Sony's um, built-in picture profiles. That's not what this video is about. Um, you can go learn about those from someone else. Those are complicated, but if you want S-Log3 because you want to be able to change your colors a lot or and you wanna make sure that it really grabs as much detail in the pixels, then um, that's what this is about. So um, I, uh, understand the desire to like shoot something where it looks good out the out the door but if you want it to look better then you're going to want to add creative pro profiles on top of that um, built-in sony cube profile that you import all right so after you've um, set up your picture profile on one picture uh, what can you do then i would go and copy the lumetri um, information from the effect onto the other clips so I a lot of time a lot of time have a lot of clips um, and I set up the Lumetri colors for one clip and then I go up to that top left in Premiere Pro and I'll cut and I'll, I'll right click and I'll copy the effect that says Lumetri color and then I'll, I'll paste it onto everything else and sometimes you'll want to change the creative part um, like you might want to tone it down or, or turn it up or change exactly what creative part based on like if it's like darker outside you might want to if, if you or if you want if you, if you look like you're in a cold environment and you want to look a little bit bluer then you might want to use the moon like you might you can change use a lot of different pic picture profiles depending on what you're trying to do and a lot of time if especially if you're using green screen you want to match the the person to the environment that they're in and that's why you really want to um, change up those picture profiles um, especially for for green screens but based on the individual clip so copying and pasting is great but you don't have to do it that's it um, yeah it's it's a pretty simple process all you have to do is know how to go to the Sony website and know to expose for 42 plus or minus one and know to, to like have zebras turned on on your camera and hold it up and make sure the zebras on are on there because you have to adjust the aperture because your shutter speed's not going to change uh, because say that you're shooting 30 frames per second you're going to shoot one over 60 and if that's the case um, then um, it, you can you have to adjust the aperture based on the shutter speed because the shutter speed is not based on like your exposure. So you have to find a way to set up the exposure properly with that shutter speed. Whereas with a camera, you can change the shutter speed to set up the exposure. Um, but with with um, with a with a video situation, you have to just you you can't you don't get to choose the shutter speed. I recently made an outdoor video during the day and I had a neutral density filter that I think it only went up to like a nine or something like that. And what I had to do is I shot at 120 frames per second so that I could uh, have, a, have a faster shutter speed because I wanted to tone down the light because I didn't have a, a, a neutral density filter that would allow me to shoot at one over 60. So sometimes say that you're outside and you don't have a bunch of like, you don't have two different variable neutral, neutral density filters that allow you to shoot whatever shutter speed you want. Um, in, in that situation, um, sometimes you, you just want to change your frames per second and that way you can change your shutter speed. So, um, that's it. Um, the, the 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 exposure settings once you it's it's a little it's like a dance you know it's it's like ISO increases your exposure and faster shutter speed um, decreases your shutter speed and um, if you're shooting at 1.8 then um, it's going to increase your exposure and then if you shoot at 16 it's going to massively drop your exposure so if you want to be able to shoot at a slower shutter speed like for for pictures or something like that because you're trying to get a certain effect a lot of time you'll want to shoot with like iso 16 because you uh because you're trying to make the exposure work out 
because you're trying to figure out how to do to get that specific thing like this is what i want i want the shutter speed to be this and then you're going to have to adjust the aperture so that you can have that shutter speed um but with with video you're you're a lot of the time kind of stuck around the frames per second situation and um that's why um in some situations you might want like it's like i'm about to fast forward this video but then i'm gonna shoot at 120 frames per second why would i do that it's because i need to get the exposure right and i i i, I don't have the right neutral density filters anyways that's it um i hope that made some sense to you guys um you can learn a lot if you just keep watching videos over and over again and eventually what you've heard from other videos starts to sink in because you hear other people say things in different ways. So I just, I'd say just uh, keep watching videos and eventually you'll, you'll figure out exposure.